why should I be good? Because they keep doing things wrong. So even if I'm good, they keep doing things that are, you know, harmful to me or hurtful to me and they don't change. So I'm not going to be good either. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys. So today I want to talk about something that came up in one of my sessions. And it was a couple that were in conflict. And one of the partners said that, you know, why should I be good? Because they keep doing things wrong. So even if I'm good, they keep doing things that are, you know, harmful to me or hurtful to me and they don't change. So I'm not going to be good either. And I'm not going to treat them well. And although that sounds kind of easily what we do for her, if somebody treats us bad, I'm going to treat them bad. It's a real you know, disaster for marriages. It's not the attitude that we want to go into for either party. First of all, there should be some flexibility. You know, if we, our ego kicks in and we're right and I'm not going to change, that attitude is detrimental to marriages. So one of the mindsets that we should really have when we go into marriages is to say, I'm not perfect and my spouse is going to be a mirror to me. They're going to be telling me things that I've lived with perhaps in my personality my whole life and I'm going to have to adjust. I'm going to have to look at that and not take it as criticism and actually see as, you know what, that might be better for my marriage. And instead of looking as an ego thing, I'm going to hold on to that. It's a matter of, no, for the sake of the marriage, for the sake of my spouse, I'm going to do something that shifts that and not to look at it as a criticism. But there's a key element in the statement that my client made, which is, you know, why should I go do good? Essentially what she was saying is, why should I do good if I'm not going to get anything back? And I wanted to really reflect on that. Um, when, when we do good, so if I last month, for example, if we do zikr or if we make dua, and we make dua and we make dua, and often you'll hear people say, I made dua for so long and I haven't seen the results of it. Allah hasn't answered my duas. And, you know, it's really interesting that we live in a society where everything's about the outcome, everything's about what we get. And actually, we're missing a key component of, you know, being able to make dua. The fact that we made dua, the fact that we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that Allah inspires us to ask of Him in itself is the reward. You know, Umar Adilana used to say, you know, I, I don't care whether I get the results of my reward, of my dua or not, as long as I'm making dua. You know, his focus was on the fact that he was still worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so going back to this idea in marriages of, you know, this tick for tack, like I'm going to do good if they do good, or I'm going to do good if I see a result, that if their behaviour changes. And what that leaves us with is this kind of... Um, I guess it's powerlessness because we're relying on being good based on the other person's actions and we have to really shift that. So the shift that I, I get my clients to see is your goodness is not based on the other person. Your goodness is based on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our, our foundation should be, I want to be good because Allah loves good. You know, Allah loves the good. Allah loves those who do good, you know, and I want to be good because whatever my outside circumstances are, my internal state, my identity is this person, you know, and I want to stay good. And what happens is if both partners come into the marriage with that attitude, with the attitude that, you know what, I'm going to try to be the best that I can be. And sometimes outside of myself, my partner's behaviours might not feel like a reward to my behaviour. So I might bring the shopping and they don't say thank you. I might work, you know, nine till nine each day and they don't say thank you. But if your intentions and your foundation is right, that I did that to provide for my family, I did that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that we do that and if each person adapted that, you'd have such a beautiful marriage because it's not based on what we get. So try to remember that for next time. Whenever you've done something and you feel like, oh, it wasn't appreciated or they're not going to do anything in return, I'm not going to get anything back. Remember the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you, remember these are our tests each time we think it's about the other person. It's really not. So every time you get the opportunity in the, at that crossroad to say, I can continue to be good or I can continue to react and, and you know, attack back or change my behavior or not do something that is as rewarding as it would have been. 
slow down and say, no, I am going to take this opportunity to stay you know, with integrity, with who I am and look at who you want to be despite what's outside of yourself. And if you can both slow down and make that intention to do that in the marriage, subhanAllah, you're going to have a beautiful marriage because you're both going to be there for the sake of Allah, trying to do good. And the more good that you do, the more good that comes into the marriage. Jazakallahum khairan for watching.